Hola, muy buenas noches. ¿Cómo están? ¿Qué tal su día? All good, all fine. Hi. Very fine. Is everything fine? Very yes. interesting. Was it interesting? Yes? Yes. Very interesting. Uh, all right. Awesome then. So uh, we are going to get started today, right? Uh, before that we get started on what we are going to be uh, looking at at this session, which is going to be session number three, we are, I would like to know if you have any question regarding to the simple past. Is there any question regarding to the simple past or everything is fine? Everything is fine. It's fine, teacher. For me, it's fine, teacher. For you is fine. All right. So if okay. everything is fine, so let's get started on session number three. And as well, I would like to ask you this quick question. Is there any question regarding to the virtual platform or any exercise or everything is fine as well on that part? Yes, is everything fine? Yes. Yeah. All right. Yes. Yeah. So all right. So if everything is fine, let's get started then on session number three. Let me share my screen just uh, real quick. So there we go. Are you able to see my screen? Yes, no? Yes? Yes. Yes, yes. you're able to see my screen, so awesome. So this one is going to be session number three. Uh, what is your neighborhood like? So we are going to be studying uh, regarding to the neighborhood, some preposition of place, etc. right? So on the virtual platform, what it's started with, it is with a conversation, right? Uh, this good conversation, I'm your new neighbor. Uh, I don't know if you're able to see the, the dialogue, it's so well. Can you see it? Yes, no? Yes, yes, yes. Let me try just to make it a little bit bigger. Oh, there we go. So uh, for you to see it. So let me play the dialogue. Please uh, read along with the recorder. Then we are going to practice the dialogue in groups. And if you have any question regarding to the vocabulary, uh, underline the vocabulary or just take note of the word and let me know at the end of the recording. So let me play the recording for you. Just one second. Give me one second. Oh, session three. Let me see. All right, this one. Give me one minute. Conversation. Right. So please uh, let me know if you are able to Unit hear. Unit eight. Yes. What's no? your neighborhood? Yes, 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 yes. All right. So if you are able to hear, let me continue playing. Then. Like. Page 50, exercise two, conversation. I'm your new neighbor. Listen and practice. Excuse me, I'm your new neighbor, Jack. I just moved in. Oh, yes. I'm looking for a grocery store. Are there any around here? Yes, there are some on Pine Street. Oh, good. And is there a laundromat near here? Well, I think there's one across from the shopping center. Thank you. By the way, there's a barber shop in the shopping center, too. A barber shop? Okay, would you like to listen at once again? Yes? Yes. 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 Oh. All right. Yes, teacher. Please. Awesome. Sure. Unit 8. What's your neighborhood like? Page 50, exercise 2, conversation. I'm your new neighbor. Listen and practice. Excuse me. I'm your new neighbor, Jack. I just moved in. Oh, yes. I'm looking for a grocery store. Are there any around here? Yes, there are some on Pine Street. Oh, good. And is there a laundromat near here? Well, I think there's one across from the shopping center. 
Thank you. By the way, there's a barber shop in the shopping center, too. A barber shop? All right. So, yes, once again, or is that okay? It's okay for me. It's okay for you. All right. For the other ones? Okay. It's okay for me. All right. Okay. So, if that's fine, not a problem then. So, please uh, let me know if there is any question regarding to this uh, dialogue, pronunciation, vocabulary. Is there any question or everything is fine? The laundromat. The laundromat. The laundromat is uh, the laundry, right? Basically, this uh, is where there are watching machines. Give me just one second. Uh, okay. Give me just one second. So um, the laundromat, right? It is uh, the place where there are a lot of washing machines and the drying machines, right? So you take your clothes or everything that you have, your towels, uh, the blankets, etc., and you pay for the pounds, right? Um, according to how many pounds does your clothes has, so you are going to be using the washing machine. So those ones are the laundromats. Here we have some of them. They are not so really popular, but we have them. In este caso, los laundromats son donde hay muchas máquinas lavadoras, ¿verdad? De las lavadoras. Son las lavadoras públicas, por decirlo así. Usted paga por libra, ¿verdad? Eh, lo que lleva y así es la máquina que usted ocupa, tanto para lavar como para secar, ¿verdad? Entonces ahí puede llevar casi que cualquier cosa, Eh, ropa, eh, las, um, verdad, la, las blankets, que son los cubrecamas que nosotros le llamamos, las toallas, todo eso, pues, usted lo puede llevar ahí. Esas son las laundromat. Mm -hmm. Thank you. You're welcome. Is there any other question? No? Which one? Grocery store. The grocery store is like a mini supermarket, right? Where you can find goods. Uh, for example, sugar, probably coffee if you need it. Uh, it's not like the the tiendas that we know here, right? Those ones are mini mini supermarket, right? So you can go and buy different type of goods. Um, as I say, right, uh, sugar, coffee, everything that you need, they are like a convenience store. Uh, you can um, pick it up as well, some healthcare, different like medicines and so on. Estas uh, grocery stores, verdad, son como tiendas de conveniencia. Usted puede comprar este, abarrotes, verdad, es en realidad una tienda de abarrotes. No es como las tiendas que nosotros conocemos acá, sino que vendría siendo como un mini super, por decirlo así, verdad. Lo que nosotros conocemos como mini super, pero no las tiendas. Entonces ahí puede encontrar muchas cosas, verdad. Good. Uh -huh. Thank you, teacher. Yeah, you're welcome. Okay. All right. So someone is reporting. So yeah. And the meantime that I'm uh, just answering this message for one of your classmates, is there any other question? Do you have it? All right. Is there any question? No, teacher. No. All right, um, so let's go ahead and continue then. How many do we are? We are, I guess we are 20, right? Uh, because whenever I say that you're going to practice, some of you disappear. So uh, please, uh, I'm gonna place you in groups, five minutes, right? So you can go ahead and practice the dialogue. Try to, to give it the emotion, right? Like uh, this old lady there, right? Saying a barber shop, right? By the way, there is a barber shop, right? Uh, in the shopping center too. So try to give it the motion and try to be the natural as possible. So let me stop sharing and let me go ahead and do the breakup rooms. So.
let me place it here. I guess we are going to be together now. Why? All right. So let me recreate them. Okay. So there we go. There will be three in one group. So I'm gonna open up the rooms at the moment. I'm going to open up the rooms and I'm gonna be sending to you the image to the WhatsApp group, right? So please join to the rooms. Okay. There we go. Okay. Okay. All right, please uh, join to the groups. Okay. Landry. Landry mat near here. Well, I think there one across from the shopping center. Thank you. By the way, there's a barber shop in the shopping center too. A barber shop. By the way, I say Jack. <laughs> okay. Bye. Excuse me. And your new neighbor, Jack, I just moved in. Oh, yes. I'm looking for a grocery store. Are there any around here? Yes, they are some on Pine Street. Oh, good. And is there a laundromat near here? Well, I think there are one across from the shopping center. Thank you. But by the way, the visa cuando podamos comenzar. Usted me avisa cuando podamos comenzar, Jocelyn. Gracias. Sí, comencemos. Estaba entrando a la plataforma para para verlo más grande. Hola. Para poderlo ver más grande, es que se ve un poco borroso, ¿verdad? Sí, sí. Pero de aquí la voy a ver del WhatsApp. De aquí lo hacemos, ok. Eh, comienzo yo, ¿verdad? Sí. Jack. Excuse me. And your new neighborhood, Jack. I just moved in. Oh, yes. I'm looking for a group. Around here. Eh, ah. Teacher, un, un, una pregunta. Dígame. Eh, laundromat, as, así se pronuncia. This is pronounced. Laundromat. Yes. Laundromat. Laundromat. Yes. Laundromat. 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 The other is. Ay, ¿Cuál le dijimos la otra? <ríe> Ronda, Rolando. Uh, Aaron, algo así. Any Aaron here? Around here. Around here. Around, Around here. here. Around here. Okay. The other uh, neighbor? Neighbor. neighbor. Your new neighbor. Yes. In your neighbor. The other is our, uh, no. 
Moved in, moved in, eh, junto. Moving. Uh -huh. Moving. Ah. Moving. Ok. Moving. Ok. okay. Uh -huh. Hagámoslo otra vez entonces, Rona. Excuse me, I am your neighbor, Jack, and you moving. Oh, yes. I, I am looking for a grocery store. Are there any around here? Yes, there are. Yes, there are some on Pain Street. Pain Street. Oh, Pain Street. Oh, Pain. good. And is there a landroman near here? Well, I think there's one across from the shopping center. Thank you. By the way, there's a barber shop in the shopping center too. A barber shop. Okay. All right. So uh, be careful. It's uh, one across from. Across from. Across from. Across from. Yes. Across from. Mm -hmm. the, on the last uh, part with Mary's day, um, they have a by the way. Right? By the way. By the, by the way. Yes. By the way. Everything by the together, way. right? Everything okay. together, by the way, yes. By the way. Everything okay. together, yeah. Okay. Oh, al revés. Excuse me, and your new neighbor, Jack, I use move it in. Oh, yes. I'm looking for a grocery store. Are there any around here? Around yeah. here. Around here. Mm -hmm. Yes, there are some on Pine Street. Oh, good. And is there a laundromat near here? Well, I think there's one across from the shopping center. Thank you. Be, by the way, uh, there's a barber shop in the shopping center too. A uh, barber shop. Okay. All right. Thank you. So I'm about to close the rooms at the moment. So we are going to have to go back to the main session. Good job, okay. boys. Thank you, teacher. You're welcome. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Rola. All right. So we're about to get started then. So, um, let me see, I guess everyone is here. I hope so, right? That all of you are already here. So let's see, did you have the opportunity to practice with your classmates? Yes, no? Yes, you were able to do it? Yeah, yeah. all right. All right, so if you were able to do so, I'm glad to hear that. Let's say get a starter then, right? Um, these uh, work, right? For example, um, let me try to do just an underline in here. Let me check if I can just underline something here. Let me see shapes. I need a line here. Hmm. This is something crazy. Okay. So uh, let me see if I'm able to underline something here. Yes. So this one, right? Uh, move in, right? Move in. This one, uh, it's together, right? It's all together. Moving, 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 right? It's como que esté diciendo moving, right? Moving, moving, moving. So this one, uh, there is another one. Let me see. This one, right? Uh, be careful. I was able to hear that some of you just miss uh, this word. I'm your new neighbor. I'm your new neighbor, right? I am your new neighbor, right? So that one it will be in the way that you need to pronounce. I'm your new neighbor, right? So I'm your new neighbor, Jack, right? I just move in. So let's be careful with that one. Um, there is another one that I was able 
to hear this one, right? This one is pronounced around here, around here, around here, right? Around here. So in this one, it's like if you are just uh, doing this sound, A R, around here, right? Around here, around here. Sorry, just around here, right? Uh, there is another one, this one, right? Pine Street, Pine Street, Pine Street, right? So this one is a street, a street, a street, right? So we got Pine Street. There was another one um, that I was able to hear. This one is... Uh, across front right once again there were missing one right there's one across from the shopping center right there's 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 which is there is right but here is in the contracted form so we say there's 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 right so let's be careful with that one another one that i was able to hear it was uh, this one right this one is uh, by the way, right? By the way, by the way, by the way, right? So there was uh, some of them uh, that I was able to hear. So let's uh, be careful, it's true, right? We are reading, but as well, uh, we need to respect the pauses that natural speaking has. Excuse me, right? I'm your new neighbor, Jack, I just moved in, right? So let's... Uh, just give a little bit of respect of the natural passes that a real conversation has. Veamos acá, pues estas son las que pude escuchar, ¿verdad? Las que les decía. Eh, yo sé que estamos leyendo. Eh, los puntos y las comas están ahí por algo, ¿verdad? Son las pausas naturales que nosotros hacemos al hablar. Entonces, cuando ustedes lo lean, traten eh, de respetar, ¿verdad? La pausa. No quiere decir que usted va a decir, excuse me. Y se va a quedar callado un buen rato. I'm your new neighbor. No, ¿verdad? Sino que es excuse me. I'm your new neighbor. Jack, ¿verdad? Entonces es una pausa natural. Let's be careful on that one. Is there any question regarding this? That you might have. Teacher. Just tell me. How Go ahead. You say laundromat. Laundromat. Pronunciation, pronunciation. This one, let's see. Lo, lo, uh, laundromat. 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 Thanks. You're welcome. Another one that you might have? Another one that you might have. No. 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 All right. So let's uh, go uh, to the important part in this one, right? Which is uh, the grammar focus. There is, there are, any. Uh, there is, there are one, any, and some, right? And the prepositions, right? So just for purposes, we are going to be studying the prepositions as well, because you are going to give like a kind of directions. Let's get a starter in this case uh, with this part, right? There is and there are, and we are going to lead for tomorrow the prepositions in case that we don't have time today at night, right? So let's uh, get a starter then. Okay, let me open up my my whiteboard, right? Which is the document. So we are going to be studying there is and there are, and that one uh, is allí hay, verdad? Allí hay. Eso significa allí hay. So we have there is and there are. Esos son los que pues vamos a estar estudiando. There is and there are. 
So in there is and there are, there is something special that if you don't remember, please recap, right? There is, is for singular. For singular, right? For singular. And there are, there are is for plural, right? They are for plural. One is uh, for singular and the other one is for plural, right? So let's remember this in the meantime, right? Let's go to the presentation. So here we have questions and we have answers, right? There's one across from the street. So first of all, we are going to see uh, exactly what is the composition of each of them. And then we are going to go with the examples that we have here, right? Which is going to be for giving the directions. In there is and there are, we are going to be using something really special, right? Which is singular nouns or plural nouns. So let's see, right? Uh, in first of all, we are going to have there, there, there plus B, right? In this case, plus B plus the complement, right? The complement in that case, uh, let me place here in parentheses, it can be a singular noun, okay? It can be a singular noun or a plural noun, right? Or a plural noun. So plus the point at the end, right? So we need to have a point at the end. So that it will be like the affirmative sentence, right? Or the positive one. Let's place here positive. And let me do it in colors. So that one is going to be like the composition of the sentences, right? For example, there is a glass of water in the table, right? Let's place it like that. So there is, or sure, there is, me. go ahead. Yeah, yes. R E, yes. Yes, mm -hmm. okay. So we have the, there is a glass of water in the table. Let's say it like that. So as you might able to see, there we have um, the composition there, the verb is, and since we have just a singular noun, we are going to be using is and as well the article a and right uh, the complement, the one that you would like to have, right? So that it will be the complement. Of course, everything in singular, right? Everything in singular. So in that case, uh, that one it will be, let's go ahead and do it in plural, right? There are, there are glasses of water in the table, right? So here we have uh, the glasses, as you might able to see, we have the plural, right? For glass, which is going to be glasses of water in the table. And then we have the complement. This one, right? Uh, basically this one, the glass is the noun, right? This one, the glass is the noun. And this one, it would be like the complement of the noun, everything that we have here. ¿Qué dijimos acá en español? ¿Verdad? Tenemos eh, la positiva o la afirmativa. Usted va a utilizar there más el verbo be más un complemento que va a ser un nombre singular o un nombre plural y pues lo que es el punto. Acá tenemos dos ejemplos. En realidad los complementos son estos, ¿verdad? Los que van exactamente después del verbo. Esto ya sería como pues el complemento del complemento. Let's name it like that. Is no se llama así, ¿verdad? El complemento del complemento, pero por cuestiones para no confundirlos, le voy a llamar así al momento. Este sería como ya completando, ¿verdad? Eh, parte de lo que tenemos o completando nuestra idea en la oración. Entonces, pues, eh, acá tienen que jugar con los regulares o irregulares, dependiendo de lo que ustedes eh, van a decir, ¿verdad? Perdón, de, con los 
plurales o singulares, dependiendo de lo que ustedes quieran decir. Uh, the moment you need to remember the rules of the plurals, right? Whenever you are using there are. Tienen que recordar el uso de los plurales, ¿verdad? O cómo se, se forman los nombres plurales cuando usted esté utilizando there are, si ese va a ser el caso. ¿Estamos bien hasta acá? ¿Hay preguntas, dudas? No, teacher. No, todo bien. Muy bien. So, si estamos bien, pasemos a las siguientes que serían las negativas, ¿verdad? Las negative, después del verbo be, nosotros vamos a tener un not, ¿verdad? Va a ser un not. So, acá vamos a copiar y pegar de igual manera. Acá, si nosotros le ponemos el not, usted puede hacer, en este caso, ya sea contracción, o ponerlo todo en su forma pues, ya completa, ¿verdad? Are not. You can do contraction or the full form. Are not. There aren't glasses of water in the table. There isn't a glass of water in the table, right? So that's what we have. Okay. Acá con las negativas, ¿verdad? Solo agregamos el no al verbo be. Uh, contractado o forma completa, como usted así lo desee. Si está escribiendo, pues siempre el atento recordatorio que lo hagamos de forma completa. Question regarding to this. No. No. No, teacher. No. All right. So let's see and what do we have there, right? Lo que nosotros tenemos prácticamente ya, porque va a ser en este caso con preguntas. Vamos a ver las preguntas de acá. So the questions are going to be pretty simple, right? They are pretty simple. They got uh, everything, most likely got the same pattern. So you just have to remember the pattern for one and you're going to have the other ones done, right? So you don't have to be worried regarding to that. And let's see, can you copy this one? It's the easiest one. Okay. And here, instead of that, there will be a question mark, right? So let's do the change. And let's change it, right? Let's do the change on those ones. All right. So this is what we have. Is there a glass of water in the table? Are there glasses of water in the table? So here we have the questions, right? So in the questions, uh, you're just going to do the swap, right? As the other patterns. So there B is going to be in the beginning and, at, and then we are going to have there, which is going to be the one that we are asking for. So here it will be the answer, right? Either uh, negative or if you prefer them uh, positive, right? Depending, you can use contractions or not contractions, right? It's up to you. So here we have the answers. ¿Qué tenemos acá? Nosotros tenemos las preguntas, ¿verdad? Como lo comentábamos en las preguntas, eh, lo único que usted va a hacer es hacer un pequeño cambio, ¿verdad? Vamos a hacer un pequeño cambio. ¿Y cuál va a ser el cambio? Solamente pasar el verbo be a donde pues está there y there va a pasar a donde está el verbo be. Y así sería la pregunta, ¿verdad? Una just no question. So here we have just there is and not there is not or yes, there are, or no, there aren't. Usted eh, escoge si quiere hacerla en contracción, ¿verdad? O lo quiere poner en su forma completa. It's up to you in that case. Is there any question regarding to this so far? Is there no, any? Teacher, thank you. It's fine? It's fine. All right. Yes. All right, so if it is fine and if you don't have any type of question, this is what we have on grammar there, right? 
On grammar, we are going to be using their easy their art with the prepositions, right? On the prepositions, we have on, on, next to, next to, next to, near, near, close to, close to, across from, across from, across from, opposite, 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 in front of, in front of, in front of, in back of, in back of, in back of, behind, 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 between, 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 on the corner of, on the corner of, on the corner of. So these ones are the prepositions. Is there any question regarding to the preposition? Questions regarding to the prepositions or we are fine on the air? Fine. In, in, ba in back up is similar uh, behind. Yes, behind, right? Um, so for example, uh, the wall, right? The wall is in my back, right? So this wall is in my back, right? In back of, yes. I can say uh, the door is in the back half of the computer, for example, because I have a door here in front of me, right? So it's in the back half of the computer. The door is in the back half of the computer. Teacher, across from, cruzar. Yes, uh, that one it is so whenever you have to, uh, to cross a street or a place, right? to go to another place. So for example, I need to cross uh, the dining room to get uh, the living room, for example. So I can say uh, the living room, it is across from the dining room. Let's say it like that. So you say I need to walk a little bit to get in one of those places. Thank you. You're welcome. Another one that you might have. Near is equal close to. Yes, cerca. near. Mm -hmm. Cerca. Cerca. Eso es estar cerca. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Just one thing. Uh, near, if you want to, right? You can define the near um, as a thing, right? Something that you have near and whenever it's close to is like a person a living person right as well close to is when you have a bundle with someone right a bound with someone este near verdad eh, si ustedes quieren verlo así de esta manera pueden definir near como para cosas y close to como ya para personas verdad eh, si usted puede darle esa Esa es como una pequeña separación, ¿verdad? Pero al final viene siendo lo mismo. Lo que sucede es que close to también se puede entender como que usted está muy allegado a una persona, que es bien pegado a una persona. Entonces, pues, um, if you want, you can do that this, the difference, right, between each of them. Si ustedes lo desean, pueden hacer esa, esa, esa diferencia entre cada uno, entre ellos, ¿verdad? Si ustedes así lo desean. Just one second. Is there any other question? You tell me. Question? No, teacher. All right. So if there are no questions, let's go on this part, right? besides the prepositions. On this part, uh, this is what we are going to be using. One, it's going to be for uh, there is, right? Because we are referring just to one thing, which is singular. Any, it's going to be either four things that are plural or singular, but in negative. Uh, and some, it is just only four things that are plural, either negative or positive. Do we get it or do I need to write it down to tell me? 
¿Lo entendemos o se los escribo mejor? Escriba los títulos. Right. Please, please, please. All right. So, let's see. Let me open up another whiteboard. Right? So, here I need to move this and this. Sorry. So, in the case, right, a one. Sorry. One, right, is for singular. Any is either singular or plural, but negative, right? And some is singular or plural either negative or affirmative. Right? So those ones are the ones, right? So que tenemos acá? One is for para algo, para algo singular, ¿verdad? Como bien lo dice. Como bien lo dice la palabra, ¿verdad? One, uno. Any es para singular o plural en este caso, pero es para algo negativo, ¿verdad? Es completamente negativo. Y some es para singular o plural, ya sea negativo o afirmativo, ¿verdad? Así lo pueden utilizar. Así se utilizan, de hecho. Ok. Question so far regarding to this one. No. Ok. No. All right. So let's see this one, right? So here, uh, it's the same of the dialogue. It says, is there a laundromat near here? Yes, there is. Their answer. There's one across from the shopping center. Here, we are going to be using the prepositions, right? So we can give the direction to the person. Aquí es, eh, bueno, son las mismas preguntas de nuestro diálogo. Le pregunta si hay una lavandería cerca del lugar. Ella le dice que sí, que hay una cruzando el centro de compras, ¿verdad? Acá tenemos otra. Nos dice que está en negativa. Dice, there isn't, but there's one next to the library, right? Parece que aquí no hay ninguna cerca, pero sí hay una cerca de lo que es la biblioteca, ¿verdad? Library no es una librería, ¿verdad? Eso no es una librería. Library es una biblioteca. ¿Verdad? Así se llama. Nosotros acá le llamamos librería, también donde vamos a comprar papelería, pero esas no. Ese se llaman bookstores o school stores. So, esta de library es una biblioteca, ¿verdad? Literal. Just for you to know. So, then we have, is there any grocery stores around here, right? Lo que les decía, de nueva cuenta, are there, right? Any. Are there any, right? So, acá podemos tener any y también lo pueden utilizar acá. So, acá en el any, pues tenemos en plural, ¿verdad? Y dice que sí hay. There are some nice stores on the Pine Street. Nos dice que sí hay y como es plural, ¿verdad? Pues utilizamos some. Acá tenemos de nueva cuenta negación en plural. No, there aren't, but there are some on the third avenue. Dice que no hay, pero que sí hay algunas en la tercera avenida. Era lo que les decía, son ya sea en este caso para negativo o afirmativo. Y acá podemos ver, ¿verdad? Any, que también puede ser para plural, lo que comentábamos anteriormente. Pero también, pues, eh, usted lo puede utilizar con... Eh, el plural y dice que no hay ninguna, ¿verdad? No hay ninguna. So, si definitivamente no hay, pues usted lo utiliza con en, ¿verdad? So, acá tenemos esas, son las que van a estar ustedes utilizando, ¿verdad? No se utilizan para dar direcciones. Is there any question regarding to this? ¿Ustedes tienen alguna pregunta con esto? ¿O prefieren que las escribamos? I'm so sorry. What was that? Sorry, perdón, me estaba aclarando la garganta. ¿Qué me dijeron? Perdónenme. Uh, yes, write it down. 
All right. Did, yes. you, did so, you can write to share? Sí, vaya, hagamos las, uh, como las preguntas que tenemos acá, ¿verdad? So, veamos. Um, is there, vamos a ver, is there a laundromat near here? Near here. Va, esta es la pregunta que le hace el chico, ¿verdad? It's a name. Laundromat. Yes. Is there a laundromat near here? According to what we have here, this one it is a yes no question, right? De acuerdo a lo que nosotros tenemos aquí, esto es una yes no question. Bien podría quedarse así, ¿verdad? Yes, there is. Or no. There isn't. There isn't. There isn't, right? En caso que a ustedes se les presente así, ¿verdad? Just in case that you have something like this, which is, I don't think so, and it would be very uncommon and just in a test. Probably uh, the person that might be asking to you the question can ask you where is it? Where is it located, right? ¿A dónde está ubicado? Where is it located? Okay. So, en caso, ¿verdad? Que se le llegue a presentar algo así. Which is, I don't think so. And I hope so that never you have this case. So, you can give this, right? There's one, right? So, we are going to have there plus B plus one plus the preposition, plus the complement, right? Plus the point. That one it will be like uh, the answer, right? Esta sería como que ya la respuesta en ordenado, ¿verdad? Porque estas las vimos ahí atrasito, ¿verdad? En la, en la otra página que tenemos es una just no question. Si en dado caso a usted le hacen como que una pregunta adicional o esta, porque bien claramente usted la puede dejar así, yes, there is or no, there isn't, la persona tiene que seguir con la pregunta, ¿verdad? Where is it located? So there's one, usted puede contratarlo, ¿verdad? Acá haríamos la respuesta y hagámosla pues uh, de otro color, ¿verdad? <coughs> There's one, let me do it contractor. There's one, veamos que nos dice la respuesta. There's one across from the shopping center, all right? There's one across from the shopping. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The shopping center. All right. Let me see what is happening here. The shopping center, right? There is one. There is one across from the shopping center. So as you might be able to see here, we have there. The verb is here. One is here, and here we have the protagonist, right? Across from which is the preposition, right? Is the preposition the one that we have? The shopping center. So this one, it will be regarding to the location of the place. ¿Verdad? En un dado caso, en un, un examen, ¿verdad? Este, pues si llegan a presentar algún examen oral después de todo el curso, si ustedes se lo llegan a hacer el TOEIC oral del speaking, puede que les... Que, Que les aparezca algo así, ¿verdad? Is there a laundromat near here? La respuesta correcta realmente, pues, sería sí, sí lo hay, ¿verdad? O no, no lo hay, ¿verdad? Este usted decide. Eh, y queda claramente ahí. Si la persona ¿verdad? está interesada en saber cómo llegar, 
en dado caso su respuesta sea positiva, es posible que le haga esta siguiente pregunta. Where is it located? Entonces, ahí es donde nosotros utilizamos la segunda parte de nuestra oración. There is one across from the shopping center. Y aquí, en esta oración, nosotros tenemos el there, el verbo be. Usted eh, puede contractarlo o no contractarlo, si usted así lo desea. Va a tener one, que es el que estamos viendo. La preposición del lugar en medio de ellos. Y, por último, tenemos el complemento, que es el lugar por el cual nos están preguntando. ¿Verdad? Entonces, así uh, sería, que es uh, lo mismo que tenemos en la, en la presentación o en el Grammar Focus, ¿verdad? Pero nosotros lo tenemos así, ¿verdad? Esto es lo que nosotros tenemos, esta parte de acá, ¿verdad? Esto es lo que nosotros tenemos. Esto es lo que está en la presentación, ¿verdad? Esto ya es bastante adicional. Question so far. ¿Tienen alguna pregunta? O los confundí. Discúlpame si los confundí, pero díganme. No, okay. yeah. eh, yo tengo, un, yeah. tengo una consulta. Yeah. Quizás yeah. donde me confundo es en qué momento hay que usar en la parte singular cuando se usa one y cuando se usa any. El one, digamos, si es positivo, ¿verdad? Pongámoslo por acá, one, singular, pero, ¿verdad? Positive o afirmative, ¿verdad? Affirmative. Y el any eh, solamente es un negación, ¿verdad? Ah, ok. Uh -huh. Ahí se, ya ahí me estaba confundiendo. No, no se preocupe. Ya saben. ¿Alguien más? ¿Preguntas, dudas, comentarios? Teacher, este, sí. I have a question. When bueno. I make a question, este, it's not correct to uh, use the word some, only any, in this case. In any, because I have the doubt, right? I have the doubt. Let's add something here, right? Doubt. Doubt, esto es duda, ¿verdad? Si ajá, yo digo any, okay. ajá, mm -hmm. es cuando yo tengo la duda. Por ejemplo, acá cuando vamos, bueno, cuando nos mudamos, ¿verdad? No, no sé si alguien se ha mudado recientemente o cuando se mudaron para su, para su lugar de residencia, pues toca preguntarle a los vecinos, mire, ¿y, y será que por aquí hay alguna tienda? ¿Verdad? Disculpe usted, ¿será que por aquí hay alguna tienda? Entonces, ese any es ese alguno mm -hmm. o alguna. Pero nosotros tenemos la duda. Is there any grocery store near here? Entonces ya el, el cliente, el cliente, perdón, la persona nos puede decir, ¿verdad? El vecino nos dice, fíjese que sí, ¿verdad? Este, hay una en el tercer pasaje, por ejemplo, ¿verdad? Si alguien vive en una colonia de pasaje o en un lugar. Sí hay una en el tercer pasaje, ¿verdad? O mira, en el edificio tal, ¿verdad? Allí en el apartamento tal, tienen una pequeñita, ¿verdad? Entonces esa persona le, le dice, yes, there are some near here, ¿verdad? There is one, um, three blocks after this one, for example, right? There is one, three blocks after this one, house number four, let's say like that. Or there is one in the building B, for example, apartment 242, right, for example. Entonces, este, ahí le dice la persona a dónde está, ¿verdad? Si está cerca, si está lejos. Acta, pues, eh, no es como las ciudades de allá y quizás nosotros no, no lo encontramos como mucha lógica. Mire, te pedí el cruzando y el que no sé qué. Pero sí cuando nosotros vamos a un lugar. Porque, por ejemplo, si alguien le dice a usted, ¿a dónde queda la torre del seguro? Okay. Ah, no, hombre, este, y ten una 44 y bajate todo Metro Centro Sur, le dice a alguien, ¿verdad? Y ten una 44 y decirle que te bajes en Metro Centro Sur si no conoce, ¿verdad? ajá. Y ahí se va el vigilante y le dice, vaya, parece caminando recto, ahí va a haber un edificio bien alto, ¿verdad? Esa es la torre del seguro. Pero no son así las direcciones, ¿verdad? Entonces, uh, si alguien le pregunta, where is it located? Uh, you need to take, for example, a 44 bus. You need to get out from the bus in the, what? Metro Sur uh, bus stop. Walk down, right? And you need to cross 
is across from the street between the Metro Centro Sur and a little plaza that is there. So you will be able to see the building. So si es como se dan las direcciones allá, ¿verdad? Acá nosotros, pues, el palito, vea. El palito, y vas a ver una casa roja, y después de esa casa roja Eso caminas sí. tres, y vas a ver un palo de aguacates, ahí es mi casa, ¿les? ¿verdad? Entonces, nosotros somos así, allá no son así. Entonces, este, pero igual, acá ¿verdad? siempre aprendemos algo nuevo. Vamos a aprender a dar direcciones allá con nomenclatura, ¿verdad? Que they go with nomenclatures and they go with miles. They don't go with kilometers, right? Nosotros acá tenemos kilómetros, pero ellos no tienen kilómetros, ellos tienen millas. Entonces, it's something different, right? So, it's pretty different. So um, here, uh, that's what we are going to be learning. We are going to be studying with a map, right? Vamos a estudiar con un mapa chiquitito, but I guess that that one is going to happen tomorrow. So um, questions regarding this before that we can continue. Is there any other question? No, teacher. I have? No, all right. So give me just one second. I need to accommodate myself. All right. So let's see. Uh, let's go on the next part, which is uh, the ones that are the plural ones. Here we have the plural ones, right? That are any grocery stores around here, right? As we were saying, this any, it is either for singular plurals whenever we got a doubt on something, right? So it's the same, right? It's the same. So we already know how to form the question. And this one is the same, right? The only thing that we need to remember is that some it is for plurals, right? For plurals. So you are going to be using it for plurals, right? And either negative or positive, right? So whenever you have a plural, please remember to use some. The only one that if it will be negative for a plural or singulars is any. Right. So acá es el mismo contexto que tenemos en la otra, solamente que es eh, pues plural, ¿verdad? Y tenemos que recordar que vamos a sustituir, ¿verdad? El one por some o por any, dependiendo de lo que se nos esté preguntando. One thing more, be careful, right? Tengan cuidado con los nouns, porque si usted lo está haciendo, le está escribiendo by itself y no le están poniendo, ¿verdad? Lo que es la S, pues entiende que solamente es una. Entonces, si usted tiene plurales, por favor, recuerde agregarles la S, ¿verdad? Recordemos agregarle la S. Y es lo mismo, ¿verdad? Lo tenemos on Pine Street, on Third Avenue, around here. Vamos a estar utilizando la preposición de lugar. So, vamos a tener there. Más el verbo be, más son. Y vamos a tener, pues, el lugar, ¿verdad? Que sería en este caso el noun, más lo que es eh, la preposición, que este en este caso es on y su complemento, en este específico. Pero acá, si usted le quiere decir que no hay, pero si hay en la tercera avenida, es lo mismo. There, there be, tenemos son, la preposición y el lugar donde están ubicadas, ¿verdad? Sobre la tercera avenida. Preguntas concernientes a esto o no hay preguntas. So I have a question. Go ahead. Cuando dice que hay que agregarle la S, ¿a qué le vamos a agregar la S? Ahí no entendí. Al, nom al nombre plural. Al plural. Okay. Por ejemplo, este, ¿verdad? Um, digamos, ¿verdad? La grocery store. La grocery store. ¿Verdad? Aquí, ¿cuántas tiene? Una. Vale, igual. Una. ¿Verdad? Solo una. Por lo tanto, es singular. Pero cuando usted ya esté utilizando there are, tiene que agregarle la S. Stores. Yes. Nombres compuestos lo llevan al final, ¿verdad? Y aquí tenemos dos o más, ¿verdad? Las que ustedes quieran tener. De dos en adelante. Entonces es a este. A este noun, que pues así se llama, es un nombre. Vamos a agregarle nosotros la S. Cuando son nombres compuestos, 
compuestas se le llaman que tienen dos palabras juntas. Grocery es una cosa y store es otra. ¿verdad? Ella sola hace tienda de abarrotes, entonces es un compound noun. Se llaman así. Y en el último es donde nosotros le agregamos la S. Bueno, si ustedes se fijan, la palabra está separada. Entonces, tengamos cuidado. Por ejemplo, si usted tiene pen, ¿verdad? Pen, que es el lapicero, pero para poner los lapiceros, tiene que agregarle la S, ¿verdad? So, lo mismo pasaría con los libros, ¿verdad? Pues si lo queremos hacer plural, tendríamos que decir books, ¿verdad? Y así sucesivamente. ¿verdad? Si nosotros queremos decir un bebé, ¿verdad? Es el baby, pero quiere decir que hay varios niños, so usted lo cambia, ¿verdad? Y dice babies. Entonces, eso es lo que tienen que recordar. Siempre y cuando usted tenga there are, there are, nada más. Hacer ese cambio si no está hecho. Y en la pronunciación, usted no me va a decir grocery store, tiene que decirme grocery stores. Right? Stores, con la S al final, stores. Si usted este, no tiene bien pegado la pronunciación de la S con el documento que le mandé, exagere solamente la S por el momento, ¿verdad? Grocery stores, grocery stores. De esa manera usted indica que está hablando en plural, ¿verdad? Is there any questions so far? ¿Preguntas? Thank you, teacher. Teacher, thank You're you. You're welcome. You're welcome. So it's uh, almost time to go. Right? Well, no, it's almost it's time to go. I don't know if for tomorrow, do you have any question before that we go? No? All right. So let's keep on practicing, advancing on your virtual platform. Have a good night. We will see us each other tomorrow. Rest and relax. Right? Any question, hit me up on WhatsApp. Take care, guys. Bye, thank you, teacher. Bye. Good night, teacher. Good night. Good night. Rest and relax. Bye bye.